Hello, Covalence community. Uh, welcome to our TypeScript video about using TypeScript projects. So we have a previous video that you might want to check out if you don't know anything about TypeScript, uh, just an intro to it. And in here, we're going to show you how to actually use TypeScript in a project setting where you're watching files and uh, you know, doing some configuration about how your project is meant to be set up. So. We're going to go over uh, initializing the project, um, a little bit about the tsconfig.json, which is where you configure your project settings, and how to watch for changes so you're not constantly having to say TSC and compile your files. So let's dive in. Yeah, there are a lot of cool things that you can use the uh, TSC command line tool for, and you can set various flags, but uh, tsconfig.json allows you to kind of set all those up in a configuration file so that you just run TSC and you don't have to worry about remembering all those flags. Right. So to get started, we're just going to run TSC dash dash init and that's it. And that's going to tell TypeScript to go out and create our tsconfig.json file in whatever directory that we're in. And it's going to set up some defaults for us. Yeah, and the cool thing is, and you'll see this here, it actually, it not only sets up a couple defaults based on best practices when you're using TypeScript, but it also documents what some other configuration things you can uh, use are. So right. in here by default, it says the target ES5. And what that means is uh, what ECMAScript version are we targeting? So when I'm writing, and in the previous video went over this, but when you're writing TypeScript, you can use the latest and greatest JavaScript uh, st standards that haven't been implemented in the browser yet. And then you can use this target thing to specify where you want to compile to. So ES5 would be pretty standard in most projects. I want to compile from whatever my TypeScript is down to something that is compatible with ES5. Now, if you were deploying to a server or something, you were using Node, uh, you may not need to compile down to ES5. You could compile to ES2016 or something like that, depending upon which uh, version of Node you're using. Right. And it shows you pretty cool in this file of what things you can use. So uh, most of the node ones I see are ES2015 right now to be safe, but that's as of the time of this video. Um, but we also have the strict option automatically set. So you can't have implicit any's. You got to do uh, a couple other things. And we see that our code is broken over here, which we'll look at in a second. And that's because of this flag that's been set. Yeah, and this is that's a very opinionated rule there. That flag uh, will really make you think about a lot of different things that you used to take for granted in JavaScript. Um, and in, for example, our, our problem that we can get into right now, we can show you, okay, what is it saying in here? says that the object is possibly null. Yeah, so, so what that means is it's when we do document.query selector, we're looking for a button. And what TypeScript is telling us is, well, there may not be a button on the screen. And you might get in there and say, wow, this is a pain in the butt, right? Like, why are we... <laughs> like, I know there's a button. <laughs> yeah, like, I, there's going to be a button on the screen. But TypeScript doesn't know that. And what it's telling you is, like, you need to store that in a variable and check if it exists before you try to call add event listener. Right, so the way to fix this would be like, uh, maybe have our button equal to this. And then before we do this, we'd say, oh, this would be BTN. Still gonna be an error, but if BTN, then we can do this. That way we know the button exists before we go and try to use it. And it prevents us in case we reuse this file on a page where we didn't have a button. Yeah, and like maybe we're using button there and or we're trying to grab it by a class and that class <clears throat> name doesn't exist at some point in time or changes. I mean, there are various right. scenarios where when you first write it, you're like, there's no way <laughs> right. that this button will never exist. But then you go edit your HTML and you change that button to an input submit. Yeah. And, and then also your code's broken. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you may not think immediately, you, you might think, well, TypeScript is working against me. And what TypeScript is actually doing is it's kind of trying to train you to write better, uh, more error-proof JavaScript. Right. 
is preventing you from making mistakes in the future. And yes, it's a little bit more coding. You might not have done this initially, but it's going to prevent errors in the future. So, uh, and that was because of the strict flag that we had set over here. So this is going to make you do more of those checks and make sure that you actually use data types. And yeah, now if you're of the opinion like I really just do not want that. That particular error is because of the strict null checks. Right. So some people say this is a little bit too far. Uh, I don't want to do strict true. I might not do strict true, but we might have no implicit any. And what no implicit any means is you know, if you sure. don't define the type of a variable, it is implicitly any type. Right. Right. So like if I were to say bar test equals well now I can't just say there's, bar test. there's almost no way to do it yeah well there's almost no way to do it what to get this the error yeah well in what in the way we're doing it now yeah well, I just have to create a new function well you can do a function and that function returns type any like that this isn't gonna work yeah because I haven't specified what type this is so I could say this could be any type and just specify that it's any, but I gotta be, impl I gotta explicitly do that if I have that flag set. And that's a really good flag to have when yeah. you're coding. It's almost always set in the projects that I've seen mm -hmm. because otherwise why aren't you using TypeScript if you're not gonna specify your types? Yeah. Right. And sometimes you do need to use any because JavaScript is a dynamic language and you may, there may be a scenario where you don't know what the type might be Mm -hmm. And in that function, you're checking the type before you do something. And that's fine, but this makes you actually think about that before you just accidentally do something like this. And then the developer using this function now has no idea what they're supposed to pass in. Yeah. All right. Um, another cool thing that we can do once we have a project set up is that before we were specifying like tsc app.ts and then that would do our compilation. But now that we have the TS config set up, we can just say tsc and it looks at the TS config to decide what it should do. And by default, it compiles all TypeScript files in your directory structure from where you're at down. Yeah. So we don't always want to have to come over here every time we save the file. So now what we can do is add this dash W flag and it will sit and watch for the file changes. And whenever we make a change, it'll recompile the TypeScript. So let's take a look at that. So I'm going to go ahead and in VS code, open another window over here and pull up my JavaScript file. And whenever we change something over here, we'll see that it automatically happens. Uh, in this window. So if I add a new function, or just add subtract, and pass in the same parameters. When I save it, it's gonna automatically go ahead and do that for us because it's watching that file. So this is really convenient because you don't wanna have to go compile your project every time you save a file and uh, just makes it easy to go edit your, um, your files. And you'll see that it, the only thing that really did different here is remove these spaces, which is fine. Mm -hmm. And that's the basics of setting up a TypeScript project. So go ahead and do that and play around with it, play around with those settings and look them up. And we have some specific things that we like to set up for whenever we're doing different types of projects, depending on what your environment is. And we'll have some videos on that as well. So. We will see you next time.